So this is Ulitsa Zvierska in the uh, former Uj ghetto and we have uh, in front of the church the two spires which is one of the uh, most uh, famous landmarks, if not the most famous landmark of the ghetto. And um, I found this building here which I find uh, particularly interesting. Uh, from the, uh, the front it mightn't seem so much but what it has got is this very interesting door which are the types you can very rarely see these days. And we'll have to get in a bit close to actually show that, I think, and there's this traffic uh, coming up and down. It's going to be a little bit difficult. But uh, that's the sort of thing you'd get in many of these apartment blocks uh, just before the war, uh, until quite recently, uh, uh, well, sorry, after the war, I should say. <laughs> um, in Spain, used to have them. I remember I was learning Spanish. It was in the book that um, somebody came back home late and he gave five crusaders to the uh, dorm and let them in. And uh, so uh, in the 60s. The but the, these sort of things here uh, were quite common uh, in uh, many, in many cities. I mean, Warsaw, though, they live in the ghetto. They are part of the way which the Nazis would use to intimidate, uh, terrorise uh, people. Uh, they would have them closed when there was fear of so people couldn't get in and couldn't get out. And if you lived there and you couldn't get out of your block, it wasn't like this today, you probably got enough food to last you. Um, in those days, they didn't have it. So now I'm going to walk across the road, taking care not to get knocked over. I thought we'd get a lot of views. I got knocked over filming it, but I just want to film it and answer the door. I find it particularly interesting. And the band in the shop next to it. So I'm careful of the things as people stand around. You see the stairwells, there's three people still living in the so I'm not going to bother them because that's the sort of way people lived in the bottom. So within this uh, block, we have uh, these three windows and the door there. Now I've just been speaking to a gentleman here. Uh, has lived here all his life, and uh, I presume he's uh, actually younger than I am, uh, but his uh, grandmother was telling him uh, all about what, ha what happened to him. Uh, now, the first thing I'll mention is in the film of Agnieszka Holland, Euro Europa Europa, uh, which uh, is uh, an excellent film, uh, if you get the chance to see it, there's a scene where uh, the, the boy comes into the wood ghetto, he's on a tram and he looks out at the windows and he, see he thinks he sees his mother in the street, and that was actually filmed here, uh, in this section here. Um, obviously, uh, Europa Europa, that was a film, but it was based, it was based on fact, and the child uh, uh, did actually come into the Wuj ghetto. He was somebody, he was from Wuj, but he managed to uh, wind up in the uh, German army. In fact, he actually saw action uh, on the Leningrad front uh, before going into the uh, uh, Hitler Jugend, and he came here see if you could find his family whilst on leave. Anyway, you can read that book, it's a uh, very good book, Salomon Morel. So we have the, the building here, now at the front, uh, as can be seen that one of the shops was actually now derelict, and certainly some of the buildings are derelict, but there are still people living here. Now, once upon a time there were balconies up there, which have now gone, and uh, they were gone recently, so, but you can get and imagine how many people would have been living here. Uh, when this was the ghetto, you'd have had, not as it is now, maybe one or two people in each room, but maybe five to eight people in each room, two or three families to a flat, with terrible uh, amounts of uh, overcrowding. Uh, around here, we have uh, other buildings as well. And um, I was told there was a building here, which... Uh, blew up in a gas explosion in 1970 or thereabouts in the 70s uh, but somehow I don't know how nobody actually was killed I want to see these other blocks as well around here all of which was part of the Wuj ghetto now if you think of Warsaw when there's next to nothing I know maybe that's a little unfair but there's nowhere near the amount of the wealth of uh, material which is still standing as we see uh, here in Wuj. So I'm gonna walk back down here and 
So that's what I'm saying. We also took down and told me about the person lived on the third floor. We were left, went to Israel, Palestine before the war. He didn't like it too much. He came back in the 50s, but then he found out like, communism even less, and he uh, paid off back there. And he lived, he lived on the third floor. He told me his name, but I won't mention it over the, uh, over the internet. I don't know how old the lock is, of course. I think he was coming in. Let me fill it in a minute.